to Live I've Been Living. If you guys are new here, my name is Emily. Welcome to my little motherhood channel where I take care of all things mom. Today's video is actually starting after I filmed another video. So I was like reviewing a hand blender that's three in one. And I figured, you know what, if I'm reviewing this anyways, let's go ahead and make an elaborate breakfast. I still have some things I need to film for footage for this review video. So I thought I'd bring you guys along with me. For breakfast this morning, we are going to be making pancake muffins because I found that is the best way to make a bunch of pancakes all at once and then it's great for the little ones. I'm gonna be making some cheesy eggs with some grilled onions in there and homemade whipped cream because, you know, who can go wrong with that? So I still have to make the whipped cream, chop the onions, and mix the pancake batter and get all of that started. I woke up a little bit earlier, if you can tell by my voice. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to get a lot of this done before I need to go and get Aubrey. So let's go ahead and make some breakfast. So one hack that I have used in the past but didn't need to use here because I was planning on using my little machine to chop the onions is to put a damp paper towel like soaking wet on the chopping mat and that will attract any of the oils or whatever it is in the onions that makes you cry. So if you want to save your eyes while chopping onions if you don't have a machine like this is to like soak a paper towel, lay it on the mat, and save your eyes that way. Next up, I made this homemade whipping cream. It was a recipe that I got from my friend Casey when we were out in Texas. It is so delicious. My whole family loves it. We love it on our pancakes, but I especially love adding it on top of some hot cocoa, which I don't have very often. I actually don't really prefer hot drinks, but when I have hot cocoa, putting this nice cold whipped cream on top just is the icing on the cake. It makes it so yummy and I actually made some later on and Aubrey was stealing it from me. So there you go. So once I had pretty much prepared everything for breakfast, it was time to actually start making it. So I put some butter and oil in a pan and threw the onions in the pan to get cooking. I have learned that if you don't want your butter to totally like burn and brown, that you want to throw some oil in as well. So that is why I did both oil and butter. And then I put the little pancake batter into the mini muffin pans. I didn't make enough batter, so I made a little bit more and these onions were looking pretty delicious. They were smelling really good as well. I kind of had to turn off the heat every once in a while so that they wouldn't overcook. Um, I really didn't know exactly my timing of the morning and so I just wanted to get a head start because I know that onions take a while to actually make. Okay, so the oven is preheating to 350. I've got my first little tray of the pancake muffins. They're gonna go in for about 10 minutes. Um, I do plan on making more because these are just great to have on hand and store in the fridge and then like heat up as you want them. Uh, and then I'm gonna let my onions just kind of sit here. They're pretty much fully cooked and I'm just not ready to pour in the eggs yet. So I'm gonna go get Aubrey, but before I just completely head up there, I'm just gonna kind of set the table so that I have less to do when she's down here. Scratch that, my dad is getting Aubrey, so I'm gonna just kinda keep working here. So these eggs I actually beat up the day before and just stored it in the fridge. So that is one way to save some extra time in the morning. If you don't want to have to crack a bunch of eggs and deal with that, you can actually get it done the night before and it makes life a whole lot easier in the mornings. Here 
here's the result of my little mini muffin pancakes. Uh, they don't look like, you know, normal pancakes, but they definitely come out like a nice golden brown on the bottom. And they just are cute and bite-sized and the kids can take really exactly how much they're gonna actually eat. So I really love this little hack. We also had some bananas that I wanted to use up and so I figured I would make some banana pancakes as well. This is a little recipe I came up with a while ago when I was in Texas and it's worked out pretty well for us. I don't add any extra sugar and so it's a pretty healthy pancake and that's why I don't feel so bad about adding chocolate chips to it. And here is my prepared meal for the morning. It was super delicious. Which one can I drink from? I'm going to drink for this one. Yes, okay, Mommy. Okay. Mink, 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 mink. Mommy, my tongue is black. Your tongue is black? <gasps> I love you. What are you? I love you. I'm a witch. Okay, so it is 12.15 right now. I have to leave for a cardiologist appointment um, close to like 1.45-ish. So to keep us occupied, I'm gonna do some bubbles in the backyard with Aubrey. She already played a little bit with these little like seashells that we have. And while she's outside, I'm gonna see if I can bake some chocolate chip cookies. You like your bubbles? Do you like your bubbles? Okay, so sorry about the dishwasher in the background, but I'm just gonna be doing the recipe here on the back of the chocolate chips from Costco. And I'm gonna be doing a double batch. So my plan is to do a double batch and then freeze a bunch, and then maybe we'll have some left over for Christmas time. Um, most likely though, we'll sneak into them and eat them before Christmas. But the idea is that if you make a bunch when you're already planning on making some, then you can freeze them and use them for a lot later. I'm also gonna be trying out the silicone baking mat that I got a while ago, um, just to see if it's better than parchment paper, but I've had a request to do like baking essentials, like a video on the must-haves for the kitchen for baking or cooking, and I think I'm gonna do that. Unfortunately, all of my stuff is packed away in storage, but I still think that I might be able to film it here. So. I'll do a video on that coming up soon. Let me know what you guys are excited about and let me know maybe some of your baking essentials and I'll make sure that they like match up with my list or I'll make sure to like honorable mention them as something that you guys find essential. But without further ado, let's get baking. So on this day, I really wanted to bake, but I was feeling pretty tired uh, at this point already in the morning, and it wasn't even that far into the day. It, I don't even think I had a bad night's sleep. I was just feeling really exhausted, and baking is kind of therapeutic for me, so I knew I wanted to bake 
Thankfully, my mom was able to kind of keep an eye on Aubrey as she was playing outside, but I kind of felt a little torn. I wanted to incorporate Aubrey in the baking. I know that I always had fond memories of baking with my mom, but I also knew that if I had her help me, that would kind of take away some of the therapy that I get from baking. And I don't know, do any of you guys experience feeling torn between this? Because it's like, I want her to have these memories and I do incorporate her and get her help in a lot of things in the kitchen. But there's also other times where it's just like, I want to do this by myself for me. And I still feel guilty about not including her. So I don't know if I'm sure I'm not alone. And maybe just me sharing this with you guys makes you feel like you're not alone either. But um, I don't know. I This morning in particular, I really wanted just to get away, like listen to some good music and bake. And that's what I did. I'm trying not to still feel guilty about it as I'm like editing this video. But, you know, there will be other days where Aubrey will help me bake and she'll learn and, you know, we'll grow together. But anyways, um, as we're looking at these silicone mats right here, I actually really loved how they worked. There wasn't really much residue left on the mats after each little batch of cookies came out and the cookies came off like perfectly fine. There was literally like no crumb stuck to the silicone mat. So I'm really glad that I bought two of them because it will make baking a little bit quicker. And yeah, I mean, I would still buy parchment paper probably when I make breads and stuff, but for cookies, this is the way to go for me. So I was able to get a total of four trays baked, but there is still plenty of dough. Um, I'm actually using what looks like like a hair bag. I don't, what's hair something? Um, they're from Dollar Tree and I kind of broke this one because this bowl's just a little tad too bit big, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and cover that up, maybe bake some more tonight. And then what I might also do is just scoop out like cookie scoop size um, bits of dough in a container and then just freeze that. And I think that will actually be better for my family because, and for me, because I am one to like go in the freezer, take out a cookie or two, and let it defrost and then enjoy it for dessert. And when they're already baked, <laughs> Then you go in at like Christmas time and you're like, oh, I'm ready to have my cookies. And you're like, there's only two left. So if I do it this way and I bake like a little bit more, maybe half of the remaining dough and then freeze the rest, I think that will be the best option for us. And then we can like have fresh baked cookies whenever we want. But this is pretty much all done. I'm gonna let these cookies cool. I have to head out to my cardiologist appointment. My mom was playing with Aubrey outside. She got some footage, so I'll show you that here. And then I will update you guys about my appointment. Say goodbye. Bye, Mommy. I love you. I'll give you a big hug. Okay. I love you, sweetie. Mm. <laughs> Mommy, help me make what? I was not going to give you a shot at you would be a better. Okay. I love you. I'll be safe. All right, bye, Aubrey. Not told you that it was not reading. Okay. I'm going to let you the doctor will be really mad. Okay, I won't touch it, and the doctor won't be mad at me, right? Okay, guys, I just got done with my appointment, and that had to have been one of the most, I don't know, confusing kind of appointments ever. Um, not just for me, but also for my doctor because we were looking over the like records from my previous cardiologist 
and um, just like the way that like everything gets transferred over it was either like repetitive or we couldn't find some of the results that my cardiologist now needs but in there it said that I did not have peripartum cardiomyopathy but I remember my doctor saying that I did back in El Paso when we were stationed in Texas and so I'm just like did I have this problem did I not have it like obviously I had symptoms that were resolved with certain medications um, if you guys watched like some of my previous videos you saw like my really swollen legs and all that stuff but like so now this cardiologist is like based on what's written here it says that I didn't have that problem but because that's what I remember he's like I have to assume the worst so anyways we scheduled an echo which is like where they do an ultrasound of my heart and then I'm going to do a follow-up appointment with this guy um, shortly after so that will be coming up in the next couple of weeks but I'm just like great so like what are my issues then and I mean like seemingly like I'm healthy now like there's really there shouldn't be any problems or like we don't foresee me having like major heart failure so I just I don't know I'm just like I don't want to have to worry if I don't have to and we are kind of just taking this as like a precaution but it's kind of stressful because it's like if I don't need to be going to extra doctor's appointments then I don't really want to be so hopefully if anything like all of these tests and whatever like will rule out maybe that I've ever had this cardiomyopathy and then I don't have to worry so much about future pregnancies um I don't know I'm just kind of like oh man like I wish I kind of wish it was more black and white but right now it kind of feels like we're in a gray zone with my heart and that's okay I guess I just have to embrace it but anyways, it is almost four o'clock. I am going to head home, probably hit a bunch of traffic, and by the time I get there, we're gonna leave for dinner. So I'll try to show you guys some clips. Um, if I get home with enough time to like bake another sheet or two of cookies, I will, but we'll see. So let's get on the road. So after getting home, I was able to squeeze in like a tray or two of cookies, which I brought some to the park to share with my family. We ate at Arby's, we had a good time there. Aubrey was being silly. And then when we get to the park, so we recently bought this wagon and it was packed with stuff as you guys will see. But Aubrey always insists on pulling the, what she calls dragon, which I think would be a good name for a wagon cause you kind of drag it anyways. But uh, she she loves pulling this thing and, and really hates it when anyone tries to help her. So on cement, she can pretty much like handle it herself. On grass, it's a little bit more difficult. And like the last time we went to go watch my nieces and nephew soccer games, she um, was getting some help from Juan and she didn't want it. So she started crying. And I was like thinking anyone from the outside might think this is child abuse because it's like, oh, we're making her pull this wagon. But instead, she's actually crying because she wasn't pulling it all alone. <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. But we love our little wagon. If you guys want me to do a little review on it, I will. Let me know in the comments. But this is just Aubrey cheering on her cousin. She was playing around a lot before this, but I needed her to kind of sit down and sit still so I could get a little bit of a break and actually enjoy the games. So a little cookie goes a long way. Okay, we are finally home. To be honest, I was exhausted this morning before I even left for my doctor's appointment, so I am like beyond exhausted now. But before we left, I packaged up some of the cookie dough, probably about two trays worth, like 24 cookies, um, just to be frozen for fresh cookies later. I'm gonna finish up this last little bit and go to bed. <laughs> So I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and follow along on our, you know, variety of videos that I put out two times a week. 
And like this video if you guys enjoyed it or give it a thumbs down. I, at this point, I really don't care. I'm so exhausted. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.